Let's uh, look at the concept of equilibrium moisture content. So let's say that we have a moist food sample and we place it in a stream of air. Now depending on the conditions uh, present, uh, either this sample is going to gain or lose moisture. This uh, transfer of moisture depends on the gradient of vapor pressure. Uh, vapor pressure of water that's present in the solid and the partial pressure of vapors in the air. So gradient of vapor pressure is what drives the transfer of moisture either from the product to the air or air to the product. We are going to assume that the partial pressure of vapor in the air remains constant uh, during this uh, period. So if we leave this uh, moist sample in this stream of air for a sufficiently long time, uh, we will reach uh, equilibrium conditions. Under those equilibrium conditions, the moisture content of the sample is called the equilibrium moisture content, or we use uh, abbreviation EMC. So equilibrium moisture content depends on the temperature uh, on the relative humidity of the environment and the food itself. So let's uh, plot the equilibrium moisture content that we obtain at different relative humidities where the relative humidities are from 0 to 100 and uh, we will call that equilibrium relative humidity because uh, we are really looking at uh, the equilibrium conditions. So if we obtain data on equilibrium moisture content at various equilibrium relative humidities, we will get a curve as shown here. Now this curve is called the sorption isotherm. The reason we call it isotherm is because this is obtained at one constant temperature. Let's uh, briefly look at how we determine sorption isotherm. Now one way we can determine sorption isotherm is to have a chamber where we keep a constant relative humidity and that is obtained by placing a tray inside this chamber and that tray contains some saturated salt solution. In other words, we can create different relative humidities in this chamber by using different types of salt solutions. And then we have our food material that we place on a little stand inside this uh, chamber and, so, and leave it for a period of time. So over a period of time, depending on how moist or dry our food sample was at the beginning, it will either adsorb water or it will desorb water. So if the sample was very moist in the beginning, and the humidity is low, then we get a different type of isotherm. In other words, as shown here in this figure, uh, we have a curve similar to what we had before for sorption isotherm, except it will be slightly shifted to the left-hand side, and this is called the desorption isotherm. Uh, the previous one that we drew uh, is the adsorption isotherm when the sample is actually absorbing water. Uh, so it started off very dry and then it is absorbing water. In desorption isotherm, the sample initially is very moist and it is losing water. So we notice that these two isotherms are separated. This is called hysteresis. A hysteresis effect is often seen in uh, food materials. Uh, if we repeat these cycles, quite often uh, the hysteresis effect goes away. Note that the equilibrium relative humidity was expressed from 0 to 100. If we divide the equilibrium relative humidity by 100, we get the water activity. So we can also express the x-axis as 0 to 1. Now there are uh, various types of mathematical models, including empirical models, that have been used to fit the data of a sorption isotherm. The most common model is the GAB model, uh, named after 
uh, the three authors uh, who first presented this model, uh, Guggenheim, Anderson, and De Boer. In a separate uh, tutorial, uh, we will look into more details on how we can express uh, data from sorption isotherms with uh, different mathematical models.